welcome to another edition of uh, What's Relevant. Uh, today we're going to talk about prototyping and what is required when it comes to putting together a prototype. How clean or neat or what, what other things need to be taken into consideration when it comes to building a prototype. So today we're going to talk about what should a prototype look like, uh, especially when it comes to packaging of electronics, uh, and then if we're, you're doing anything in the prototype realm that uh, you end up doing more than once, what uh, should be done as far as design reuse for that. So we're going to start off with uh, looking at some basic elements of prototyping. Silas, uh, what, what should that look like? What, what are we doing when we're developing a prototype? Yeah, sure. Prototyping is a very important step of any development process for a number of reasons. Um, it gives you an opportunity to test out designs. It gives you an opportunity to kind of find problems before they become big problems and minimize your cost. Obviously, you want to be able to make your prototypes quickly, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you also need the prototypes to be as complete as they can be to match up against the final product so you don't introduce new problems later on down the road. Um, and that can take a number of forms. Um, and sometimes a project will have multiple prototypes that are each trying to focus on a particular area of the final product. Sure, sure, and something we're looking at here is uh, we're taking a look at a uh, design that was looking at some functionality and breaking out to whatever the end device was that we were uh, trying to work with to begin with. And that can be anything from breaking out on a breadboard uh, with components to wires to whatever the, the uh, interconnect needs to look like. And then it can go through things like wire wrap where it's actually uh, devices and posts and wires that are literally wrapped around them in order to uh, connect signals um, from one device to another. And those are some uh, fairly uh, crude ways of putting things together, but they allow us to have something that's not going to uh, shake apart just because it's connected together with uh, gators and clip leads and things like that, right? Yeah, you get some basic functionality real quick, but it's also something that you can use throughout the development cycle going forward. And uh, when you're looking at something like a breadboard or wire wrap, I mean, those are time-honored ways of building prototypes, um, and, and you can get a lot of use out of those. Um, but then, of course, sometimes because of modern component sizes or speeds that we're working with, those things just don't become viable, and you got to break down and make a printed circuit board. Sure. And uh, some things we look at when we're doing that is we, uh, we're looking at, okay, going to actual fabricated boards and anymore you can get uh, fabricated boards for less than $100 in, in, in some situations. And then once you have that point, you're looking at packaging, right? Yeah. So once you get a board, uh, sometimes you're going to have to have other connectors. You're going to have to interface that board to something. And so you're going to have to take that board and, and hook connectors to it or do what you need to do um, and put it in some sort of a package. And that can be anything from 3D printed cases or something that would be maybe uh, laser cutting uh, materials in order to put them together in some sort of basic uh, 2D layout type setup, right? Well, you can build very three-dimensional structures even by piecing together uh, you know, laser cut components. Um, and and you know, the, we use the acrylic a lot. It's a very uh, durable material and uh, can be labeled easily and uh, gives a lot of nice options for building things. But that's uh, really not our only option. I mean, we can go with uh, prefabricated uh, cases that we just customize, right? Yeah, and, and you can, um, you know, the laser cut, the 3D printing, uh, this, this guy here was actually a prototype of a, a product that we were putting together. And here it was spread out onto a piece of acrylic for the purpose of being able to access everything. Um, so that was one version of the prototype. The next thing that we did was we packaged it into a 3D printed case to actually be able to check, does it work in the hand? Does the software you know, make it usable? So sure, sure. we're able to do different prototypes that serve sort of different purposes. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, moving from those, we have custom, whether it's 3D printed, there's so many technologies out there between that and laser cutting or CNC machining that allow us to move along to leverage a lot of those technologies, but we can also use those off-the-shelf uh, cases and devices and uh, just customize them so, so we don't have to reinvent the whole idea of packaging and how it should work. We can work with the mounting holes and cases that are already out there, and in uh, some situations we're wanting to have something that is a one-off device that we're using maybe as a, a test fixture for an item, and we may or may not be moving that from the prototype to the production phase, right? Yeah, we can sometimes use the prototype. Uh, this guy here actually shows a printed circuit board along with some you know, hand tag wires and some other connections that were made. And then we put that just inside by some simple modifications in an off the shelf case. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's you know durable, we can continue to use it. And rack mountable steel case. Yeah, it, it works for what we need to do. And you know, it would be hard to build another one, but I don't need another one. I have the sure. one that I need. So we might call it a prototype, but it actually can be the end result. Sure, sure. 
and uh, things like that can uh, move on into other forms of uh, putting something together. It doesn't need to be a rack mount case or something like that. It can be other shapes and there's slope panels and other things like that, right? That yeah, there's we, so many different options, you know, Bud, Hammond, uh, many different manufacturers that make aluminum, plastic, steel uh, in all kinds of forms. Absolutely, absolutely. And we can move on from that and we can put uh, some other things together uh, that uh, we, we can go through design reuse. Often we're trying to solve a problem that there may be building blocks, whether through microcontrollers or FPGAs or CPLDs, that we're, we're repeating structures in. We know that we have some base devices, but we still want to bring those together. We want to put those together in a way that we're, we're not expending effort over and over again. So we're not going back to a breadboard or things like that. We're, we are leveraging uh, design reuse. Um, also, you know, when it comes to you know, what does that look like from transitioning from a, a prototype to an end-use product. This is an example here, right, of something that we, we put together that became an end-use product. Yeah, so uh, the picture you see here is the, the early prototype for this guy. Uh, actually, the board you see in there, you've probably seen in a couple of these pictures because it was a circuit board that solved some general problems that we used in multiple different things. We paired it with some uh, hand-assembled boards and uh, a quick prototype uh, PCB board with some hand wiring and threw it onto a frame to be able to build a test. And this actually was a fully functional version of what became uh, our end data transfer interface unit product. So this has got the exact same circuitry, mm -hmm. but on a new board. So this prototype allowed us to build and do software testing before we ever had a packaged product. Sure, and that, that design reuse lets us do things less expensively, right? Uh, so we're not expending that non-recurring engineering cost every single time we're, we're doing that sort of work, right? Yeah, absolutely, very helpful. And they, they can be very um, complex, they can be very uh, basic type prototypes. So what we saw before was very basic. Now what you're looking at here is part of a radar uh, signal processing system with all the RF integrated. So we see anything on here from CNC machining to 3D printing to laser cutting. And then we see printed circuit boards. We see off the shelf um, components and cards and items that are hooked together in order to produce a prototype that in the end gives us the results that we're looking for to prove the concept of the device that we're working with. Now, we saw something that was very basic. We see a prototype of a radar subsystem here. We can also move to things that are much more complex that aren't necessarily uh, quite so uh, diverse in the, in the manner that uh, uh, we're seeing here. Some items that we put together in prototype are often using design reuse, and we're, we're more looking at prototyping software than hardware, right? Yeah, um, for our purposes, a lot of times test development or things like that, we, we use a lot of the same common hardware and interfaces every time, um, but I need to be able to write different software or build multiple of the same thing. Sure. Um, so we've been able to kind of make some common boards and, and to use those things. And, um, you know, we see here a thing that would still be considered a prototype. This is not an end use product, um, but it's something that we can take the, the core internals of. And we actually have built this several times and, sure. and made a nice package. And again, it works great on the bench. Something um, is durable and rugged, but we're not reinventing the wheel every time we're, we're going to that end. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're trying to present here is that Duotech has a great many capabilities when it comes to prototyping hardware systems and software that will uh, reduce the overall cost of the product and the project and bring you a powerful, ready-to-use item in the end, whether it's coming up with something that is a one-off or coming up with something that's production ready in the end. Duotech is ready to provide that solution for you. If you have an opportunity, please visit us at duotechservices.com or visit us on Twitter.